Hi there. Uh, this video is going to actually show you how to uh, access the raw camera stream um, on the Windows Phone 7 uh, with a Mango update. So let's go ahead and we'll start by creating a new project. It's going to be a Windows Phone app, Silverlight. Uh, let's just go ahead and call this Access Cam 01. We actually can select which version we want to target. In this case, it's going to be 7.1. And we'll bring up our template. All right, so I'm actually going to make this landscape application. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of the page title, get rid of some of this extra stuff that's here. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to call it raw camera access and then in the grid we're going to add a rectangle and that rectangle will actually just fill the whole content panel there um, so let's go ahead and go over and view the code Make that a little bit bigger there so you can see it uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a photo camera um, you notice I don't have, uh, I can't recognize it, so I'm going to go ahead and resolve. And it's actually part of the Microsoft.devices namespace. So we'll call that cam. And we need a video brush. Video brush. And then what we want to do is we're going to do this in the loaded event, in the actual page loaded event. We're going to create a camera, photo camera. Um, and one thing you will notice when you're working with this um, is that there's a camera type. So if we look at that enumeration, there's a primary and a front facing. So they are planning for front facing for us. Um, and so eventually we'll have devices with that. Um, let's go ahead and create a video brush. And then this video brush, we're going to set the source to the camera and then we're going to actually set the rectangle fill to the video brush pretty simple um, so when you're doing this you want to make sure you're actually deploying to a device because unfortunately mm -hmm. um, you won't be able to uh, do this in the emulator so you need a device to actually play around with this and obviously you're going to need a device with mango on it so um, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my camera, and what's going to happen is Zoom is going to the Zoom software is going to uh, open up. Um, I'm actually going to close that, and then if you actually look under um, the Windows Phone Tools in the SDK, um, there's an application called WP Connect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run that, and that's when we use to actually make a connection with my device. Um, once I've made a connection. Um, I can actually deploy to it. Let's go ahead and get the output window. Um, so if we go ahead and deploy, um, it actually connect to the Windows Phone device and install the application. So let's go ahead and we'll start the application. Um, and because you can't see it, we're going to actually let's go ahead and close that. I'm going to open up my webcam. If we look at the device here, you can see, oops, if I can hold it steady, you can see me on the other side of the camera there in our application. So it's actually rendering the uh, camera into that rectangle there. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and we'll close that. Sorry that I'm out of focus there, but we want to be able to actually see the device. All right. So now we have that, so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually get a writable bitmap. Again, this is something we don't have a namespace for yet, so let's just resolve that. That's part of the uh, system.windows.media.imaging uh, namespace, create a bitmap. So of course, what we want to do is we want to create a bitmap that's going to um, be the correct size. Um, so we would expect that we just say camera, this is, we're talking about a preview here. Um, so width and this, the camera, 
preview resolution dot height. Um, one thing you'll find out is that these are both doubles uh, versus the writable bitmap accepts expects int. I'm not exactly sure why there'd be doubles there. That seems kind of strange to me. Uh, you would expect it to be a whole number. So um, if we were actually run this, and if we just go ahead and say deploy debug, um, actually what's going to happen is I wanted to show you this is it's going to error out. It's going to throw an exception. Um, I just want you to be able to see that that's an invalid um, invalid operation. Um, if you look, the uh, you cannot use this instance until it is fully initialized. Um, so you actually need to uh, we're going to hook an event handler here. So if we say camera dot initialized, and we're looking in there. So we just if we take this code and put it in here, and we run that. Actually, what's going to happen is it's going to throw an exception yet again. And I just want to show you that as well, um, just so you know what's going to um, what to expect here. But basically, we're going to get an exception. In this case, this is different. Different. It's an unauthorized access exception. It's in a cross-thread access. So basically, the uh, camera itself is in its own thread, and uh, it's trying to access something that's on the UI thread. So to do that, pretty simple. Let's create it. Let's create a method and just say set up bitmap. And let's move that code over here into this method. And then all we need to do is we just use our good old dispatcher. Uh, begin invoke, new action. In this case, it's going to be set up bitmap. Uh, so now this will actually deploy and this will work. So basically, after the camera is initialized, it will set up a bitmap. Okay, that's cool and everything, but we need to we want to actually be able to see that bitmap. So we're actually going to have to go back over here and, and make some changes to the, to the code. So let's go over here. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to create a width and height of 300. Um, and then we're going to actually give it a horizontal left. So the rectangle is on the left. And what we're going to do is we're going to get an image. Let's call this image cap. And this one's going to be a width, we're going to make it 400 actually, and a height 300. Um, and we're going to actually make that on the right. So what's happened, we actually have a rectangle on the left, image, image on the right. Um, one other thing we want to do here is we're going to, um, for the stack panel here, we're going to change the orientation, make it horizontal. And then next to it, we want to actually just add a button here. So let's go ahead and just add button. Button's going to be capture. I have a habit of making sure I name my stuff here. So let's just double click on that. Let's close that. Um, so actually, it's pretty simple now, is the camera. Now what we can say is we can say preview. There is a preview buffer. And in this case, um, we're just going to take our bitmap that we created. We're going to hand it the pixels, which it just needs a just needs a byte buffer, integer buffer, but a bunch of bytes. And then it's just copied that. So now all I have to do is just say source equals the bitmap. Pretty straightforward there. Um, during our capture. And so let's go ahead and do a deploy. All right, and then we can start up the application. Let's go back over here and start up our camera again so we can see it. You can be able to hold steady there from the camera. All right, so you can see me over in the rectangle that's on the uh, on this side. And then let's go ahead and click the capture button. I get this silly look on my face. So every time we click the capture button, it's going to grab a, and it'll capture it. It'll do, um, you know, capture that stream and write it into the uh, into that buffer there. Um, once we have that, we can have, maybe I can do it without having such a silly look on my face. Oh no, it was even worse. 
Um, so now we're actually, we've got a bitmap that we can work with. So let's go ahead and stop this one. Let's go back to our code. And we're going to do something pretty simple here. Um, I actually have some code that I actually already wrote. So let's do this, open up that one. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask. It's, a, it's going to be a byte mask. So, so what we've done I'd actually I'd actually put that into uh, um, into the main page but we can just do it here too. Um, so now what I've done is I've created a byte mask because uh, remember this is it's a buffer a RGB meaning alpha channel and red green blue so it's it's 32 bits, uh, which means it's four bytes. One, two, three, four. Um, so in this case, we're going to take the third byte, and we're going to set it all. We're going to have all ones, um, and so we're just going to do. We're going to simply loop through our bitmap. So we take the length in pixels of our array. Of bytes, and then we're going to take our mask. Um, oops, I guess I should actually convert that mask. And mask equals bit converter to int 32. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our mask and start indexing that. I'm going to make sure we have actually turn this into an integer. So now we can just actually take for each integer. Remember, an integer has four bytes in it. Sorry if that's kind of blatantly obvious. Um, we're just going to go ahead and and uh, or those two together. We're going to do a bitwise or. Uh, so let's go ahead and build that, and we can go ahead and oops, start debugging. Go back over here. Run that. Okay. All right, so now we have, that's my hand. And so now let's just reach across and do this. And what's happened now is we've actually just set all the R's, the reds, um, to their highest value. So now it actually look like we're on, let's see if I can look like an alien on, on there. But this is just a start. Um, now that we actually have the writable bitmap, we can actually do things with it. So I'll do another seek video, um, and we'll do some more stuff with that writable bitmap. All right. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.